Okay, welcome to the Server Crowd Podcast. In this episode, we are going to do a little bit of Active Directory. We're going to add the Active Directory role to this server and set the server up as a primary domain controller, as it used to be called. And now it's just called a domain controller. Um, there are no primary and secondary ones. They're just all the same. So what you're going to have to do is boot up into your server and log in. And then you'll see the manage your server wizard. If you don't see it, you can access it by going to start manage your server. Or if you have the classic start menu, you can go start all programs, administrative tools, configure your server wizard or manage your server. Sorry. Once you get into here, you're going to go to add or remove a role to add the Active Directory role. It's going to ask you to verify a few things, including that all of your modems and network cards are installed and configured, you've attached all necessary cables, and if you plan to use the server with internet connectivity, be connected at this time. Make sure that all peripherals are installed and connected and have your Windows 2003 setup CD available or know your network installation path. Then you're going to click Next. It's going to run some quick checks and then it's going to ask you to select a role. We're going to select Domain Controller or Active Directory. And You can see that it is not already configured because we're dealing with a fresh installation and it gives you a brief synopsis of what a direct domain controller does. Then we're going to click Next and it tells you what it's going to do. Click Next again and it's going to run the Active Directory Installation Wizard. And this is going to walk us through installing and activating Active Directory. So we'll click Next and it'll let us know that domain controllers running Server 2003 implement security settings that require clients and other servers to communicate with the domain controllers in a more secure way. So if you're using an older version of Windows or if you're using a non-Windows system such as OS X or Linux Samba, you may not be able to use the increased security. After you've read this, go ahead and click Next and it's going to ask you what level, if you want to make this server a domain controller for a new domain or if we're going to add it to another domain. At this, at this stage we're going to go ahead and stick with a new domain because this is our very first server and then we're going to click Next. Then we have a domain in a new forest, a child domain in an existing domain tree, or a domain tree in an existing forest. Now forests get to be a little bit complicated and at this point we're really not going to worry too much about them. If you're only going to have one Active Directory server then you're going to select Domain in a New Forest or if you haven't already created a forest. A forest is actually a collection of domains but for the purposes of this exercise we're going to select Domain in a New Forest. Then you're going to have to enter the DNS name for the new domain. For the purposes of this lab, we're going to use Contoso.com. Contoso.com. Then click Next. The server is now going to check to make sure that you can act, you actually have permissions to edit the domain Contoso.com and later on we'll get an error message letting us know that that name is not actually available. The next thing that it's going to ask us for is a NetBIOS name and this is the name that you're going to use to actually join and communicate with the domain. We're going to stick with the default of Contoso but you may need to change this for your requirements. Click Next and it's going to ask you where you want to store the Active Directory database and logs. If you're creating a high performance Active Directory system, you may require that the database and logs be stored on separate drives. However, 
For the extra purpose of this exercise, we're going to keep them in the same place. Also, the system volume where the Active Directory files are stored is something that you may want to share, store on a separate drive. This has to be located on an NTFS volume. So if you did not format your hard disk as NTFS when you installed Server 2003, you're going to have to reformat. Or you could create another partition and format it as NTFS and store the system volume there. I'm going to stick with the default location and click Next. Now we're going to get the error message about Contoso.com being unavailable for me to use. I'm going to select I will correct the problem later by configuring DNS manually. If you're running in a closed LAN where or if you're only using the networking on the host operating system for your labs, you can select install and configure DNS server on this computer and set this computer to use this DNS server as its preferred DNS server. However, I'm not going to do that at this time. Click Next, and it's going to ask you about permissions. If you remember, the first thing that it told us was there were some differences in the amount of compatibility to older operating systems. So, here's where you get to choose whether you want to use um, the less lower security settings to keep up with, um, to keep compatibility with the older machines, or if you would like to use the newer com settings. Since we are not required as part of the MCSE to have prior knowledge about operating systems before Windows 2000, we're going to stick with the more secure permissions of Windows 2000 and later. Next, you're going to be prompted for a restore mode password. And this is basically just the password that you'll need to have to restore the di Active Directory should something go wrong. You may or may not want to use the same password that you use for your administrator account. It does not have to be the same password. So, if you're afraid to give out your administrator password, but you may need to have access to this password, then you'll want to make it different. For the sake of expedience, I'm going to use the same password. Next, it will give you a summary overviewing the settings that you've selected. After you've read through these and verified, click Next, and the system will begin the installation. This process takes a few minutes. So, sit back and relax.